Cool. So Max took all my questions um, about who's an entrepreneur and freelance and that. My only question I'll ask is, who enjoys writing just in general here? Ah, uh, that will help. So who enjoys writing? Yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, so my story, here? Okay. So my story starts in 2011. I'd read the four hour work week about three years before this, tried to make a product business, didn't go so well. Who knew there wasn't a market for a company called the Peanut Freedom Research Group? It, it seemed like a winner to me. Um, and I was looking for something I could do with the skills I had. And so I looked at writing and marketing as a skill set I had and basically announced I was a copywriter on a whim. I wrote a Facebook note and told my networks, hey, I'm a copywriter now. If you want to hire me, um, I'm available. And that actually went fairly well. And I snowballed that into a bunch of clients and speaking events and things like that. And about a year later, I started out on my dream, which was to live in five new countries before I turned 30. So at the time, I think I was 27 and uh, had 2,500 bucks in the bank, no retainer clients or ongoing income, but had had quite a lot of wine and bought a non-refundable ticket and was in Costa Rica a few weeks later. So when you find yourself in Central America without a lot of money, you find yourself hustling a lot harder to make money. And so once I was there, business actually started picking up quite a lot. And uh, from there, I was able to uh, grow my business and then move to New York. And then while I was there, a good friend of mine told me he was moving to Europe. And so I decided, why not come join my best friend living in Europe? And that's what uh, brought me here. Uh, clicker. OK, this works. Uh, all right. Uh, yes. Perfect. So before I dive specifically into writing, um, I want to talk a bit about getting started on location independence. For those of us who have read the four hour work week, you know that the general approach is to have a product business, something you can outsource and automate and basically walk away from and have a four hour work week. And in my opinion, it's not the right way to get started unless that's already what you're doing. Of course, if you have a successful product business, stick with it, automate it, outsource it, and, uh, and live the lifestyle. But if you're an employee or freelancer, the jump to building a successful product business is significant. So going that route might take you two or three years to you're earning enough money to then live the lifestyle, to be able to travel and support yourself. On the other hand, if you start out as a freelancer right away, you're going to have an income. You're going to be developing a skill set. You can then later apply to a product business. You'll also be growing your network. And you'll be gaining a lot of general entrepreneurial experience, such as how to plan your day, how to be responsible for your income, uh, deal with clients, complaints, setbacks, all those kind of things. So from my own experience and a lot of the location independent kind of gurus I know, the right approach to getting started is to start with some kind of service business. Because you're going to be able to get started right away and be traveling in two or three months rather than waiting a couple of years before you have that uh, base level of freedom um, that I think we all want if we're here. That's probably one of the, the root reasons. Um, and then, so once you develop a service business, you're then able to leverage that into a product business. And once you have a product business, you can then leverage that into a four hour work week style business where you outsource everything and can step away. So for me, I started to step away from copywriting in the what is it, second month of 2013. And what I did was I started looking at books. So I started writing books. I started writing a blog, uh, Dreams Around the World. And that led to coaching clients, which isn't passive income, but it's a lot higher um, hourly value. And it's something I just enjoy doing. 
And so I used my copywriting skill set to then build a product business. And now I live primarily off of uh, book sales, coaching clients, and I'm in the process of building now training courses. So I use a service business to then transition into uh, a product business. So do, does anyone in the room actually earn a living through writing, copywriting, anything like that? OK. Would I, <laughs> I picked the perfect crowd for this presentation. Um, would anyone like to, or is anyone interested in this topic? Just everyone put your hand up so I feel better. It'll go faster. <laughs> Perfect. There we go. Thank you. So um, whether it's for yourself or maybe a friend that you want to come travel with you, um, writing is a great approach for that first service business to get started. Um, it's a universal skill. It's something I think everyone benefits from developing because no matter what kind of business you have, you're going to have to write, whether it's writing to clients, writing marketing, or if the actual business is writing. Um, so you're developing a universal skill set. It's also something that can end up paying very well, mainly because it can't be outsourced. So any other skill you develop, there's some level of outsourcing that can happen um, to Eastern Europe, India, wherever it happens to be. With high-level writing, it's very hard to outsource because you're dealing with cultural nuances and comedy and very specific um, aspects that you can't really send to another country to have done. So it's one of the few freelancing professions that's quite safe from just randomly being, being outsourced. And, uh, and then it's easy to transition from. So from writing marketing material, you can move on to script writing, writing novels, uh, writing, you know, just about anything. A uh, friend of a friend of mine started as a copywriter. He now writes Barack Obama's speeches. Um, so you have a lot of kind of opportunity with writing where you can connect with very uh, successful and potentially powerful people because it's a skill not a lot of people have. Um, so some tips both for writing but any freelancer. So these will apply no matter uh, what you're doing. First, you want to always try to align yourself as close as you can to the money. If you look in the financial industry, who makes more money, an accountant or a broker in Wall Street? The brokers make 10 or 20 times what a basic accountant does because they're very close to the profit. And so the closer you can get to the source of profit for a business, the more money you'll make. If you write a casual monthly newsletter for a company, they're not going to pay you a lot because there's no uh, benefit to them. They're not making more money by sending out that newsletter necessarily. But if you write a sales letter for a big product launch, you can charge probably 10 or 20 times what you would because your performance will affect the company's results directly. Um, charge more is just general advice for any freelancer. Um, pretty simple. We generally all tend to undercharge what we should and uh, don't value our skill set. So always remember that your client, not only do you bring a skill to the table that they don't have, but you're also saving them their own time, which they probably value at $100, $200 an hour. So you need to keep all that in mind when you're charging. And uh, what's the last thing here? Um, when you're picking clients, and this, again, goes for everything, writing, design work, uh, web development, the more the client cares about their reputation, the more, the more they're going to be willing to pay to have it done properly. So if you're paying an anonymous four-hour work week sort of entrepreneur to write for his site or design his site, he's not that personally attached to it if he's just trying it out and building a bunch of sites. But if you're writing for someone whose face is on the home page and their reputation is on the line, they're going to pay you a lot more to protect their reputation. And so, of course, it allows you to earn a lot more money as a consultant for them. So this is specific to writing. If you're looking um, the places to earn a lot of money, a lot of new writers talk about how hard it is to make money. They go on Elance and say everyone wants to pay them 5 or $10 an article. And that's because they're looking in the wrong places. 
So if you're looking for writing work, you want to look to, again, where the money is, things like sales letters, um, sales emails, books, magazine articles, anywhere where you're going to have a high readership. You want to avoid anything that's being done in quantity, things like SEO articles, just bulk uh, content marketing, things like that, uh, as well as anyone who's read the 4-Hour Workweek and is looking to outsource for $2 an hour, you probably don't, you might get along with them and you want to drink with them, but you probably shouldn't work for them um, because you might have a, a conflict of interest there. Um, so for getting started writing um, and really any freelance work, develop a plan, tell people that's what you're doing and, uh, and just get started. That's what I did. It's worked out decently enough so far. And uh, so that would be my biggest advice for anyone who's just starting out and, and looking to kind of get their feet wet is just get started. Don't think about it too much. Don't try to have this perfect plan. Just figure out something you're decent at, offer to help people with it, get going, and, uh, and then, you know, do it. Um, I think that's about it. Are there any questions? Yes. Did people question your ability to be a good copywriter when you first started out? And if so, how did, what was your best argument for them to continue with your um, So the question was if people basically criticized me or questioned, sorry, my ability to be a good copywriter. I would say probably my, I was my own biggest critic. Um, one thing I did is when I announced I was copywriting, I didn't BS anyone. I didn't pretend I was this experienced guru. In my advertisement, I said, hey, I want to try this out. I think I might be pretty decent. Uh, let me know if you want to hire me. I'll be cheap. And I wrote it really well. It was actually nicely done. I put a lot of time into it. But that was sort of my, um, I didn't want to have that inauthenticity. So I just told people I was new and uh, was really surprised by their feedback. They had good feedback. And then it kind of grew from there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite copywriters, I would say uh, Clayton Makepeace, um, David Ogilvy. I don't know about his copy, but his lessons I like a lot. Um, and who's the crazy guy who died recently? Gary Halbert. Um, I enjoy as well. Yeah. Uh, any anyone else? Yes. How did you go about learning copywriting? Did you read copywriting books or copy sales letters? What what did you yeah. So the question is how I went about learning copywriting. It was mostly books. So I, I think I had read one book on copywriting before with my old business, just because I wanted to learn a bit about the skill. And from there, I think I went on Amazon and sort of looked people who bought this book also bought and sort of bought the next five. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and just went from there. And then eventually sort of found a mentor and things like that as well. Um, and what he recommended is read other sales letters that you know work and then write them out by hand and just sort of get into your head. Yeah. Cool. That's every? Yes. Uh, yeah, and of course, the diagram from the second slide, like the user network basically is one. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you also do the cold approach, for instance? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a photographer, so I'm different to kind of the portrait from the sky approach. So, uh, okay. Do you have any experience, for instance, like cold approaching companies when you're tra while traveling and uh, just saying that, hey, I'm a traveler and I'm writing, I'm a copywriter? Do you have any experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the question is about using your network while you're location dependent or how to cold approach and, and build a new network. Um, so what I was actually meaning, I'll answer your question as well, but what I was meaning with the slides is when you're offering a service, you're going to build a network. You're going to be working probably for successful entrepreneurs. And so as you evolve and have your own products, you can then go back and partner with people who used to be your clients. So starting with a service business is a great way to build connections that can later be very lucrative. Um, in terms of cold approach, I, I haven't done it a lot in person while traveling. I, I have done it online using just sort of an email script, like looking for clients actively and approaching them that way. Uh, one thing that would probably work well is go to you know, local events and see if you can speak. So if you develop a presentation around 
you know, how to be an excellent photographer, or how to um, have the best photos for your business, and then speak when you get somewhere new. It's probably the quickest way to get business. Yeah. Cool. Um, what do I have? So if you want to get in touch with me, that's my email address. Um, I also have a free course around like freelancing, location independence, all that stuff. Uh, it was going to be a book, and then for some reason I made it a free email course. It was a retarded decision. Uh, but anyhow, it's there. It's free if you want to take it. And, uh, and uh, the beers and business in Berlin, I'm, uh, I'm new here. I just got here a few weeks ago. And one of the reasons I moved to Berlin is I miss my network of awesome entrepreneurial friends just to drink and hang out with. So I'm thinking of organizing an event of just kind of established entrepreneurs, having beers, hanging out, talking shop. Uh, so anyone interested, come uh, say hello and ask me about it. All right, that's it. Thanks.